But I can hear you, and, you know, I'll, I'll fix it in post. We'll figure it out. Meanwhile. Yeah. All right, here we go. The T-Bone. <laughs> And chick fruit. Let's God bless all these years. Just get it right one time. What do you want from me? Forty years they've been trying. You couldn't fire somebody if they were horrible, doing a terrible job for the veterans. And now you can say you're fired. <laughs> okay. No one listens to radio. And now for a quick disclaimer: the T-Bone and Chick Group show is brought to you by nobody. We have no sponsors. The show is still rated G for glorious. Do you know that I came up with that intro two years ago, and it was longer than the current version? Oh, what was the outtake? I uh, I just decided that some things like something about our overlords and and there was something that you said I just didn't feel like it flowed so I pulled both of those segments out to get to the one that we know and love now. I do love that intro. I do, and the only reason we haven't updated it to, for the name change of the show is because it's such a daggone good interview. I uh, what I did there with the music, I I don't play bass. Um, I wish I did play bass, but I don't play bass. I know people who play bass. I could have asked them to help me out. But what I did is I took the the first couple of seconds from uh, For the Love of Money, bada, 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 and I cut it right there. And then I just put it on loop and repeat, and, uh, and it just plays the whole time. So there's not even enough there to cause a copyright infringement because it's only like a second or two seconds. Da 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 and, and you're allowed to you're allowed to steal as long as you only steal a little bit. <laughs> I think the going rate is 11 seconds. I'm like you're not allowed to play more than 11 seconds of copyrighted music. And the only reason I think that is one year in Jacksonville, Florida, for the New Year's Eve celebrations, uh, the fireworks display was a very very lengthy medley. Of 11 second songs. <laughs> yes, just as you're all aboard. <laughs> and then that is a different song. <laughs> I would rather just have silence, I think. Just, yeah. Who is the music at a fireworks display really for? I think it's for the television audience, I think. I don't think it's for the people who are there because the... The booms at a fireworks display are enough for the people who are there. We don't need accoutrements of the musical nature. They don't need a backup band. They do not. They're just as good on their own. Once, <laughs> one time, fireworks themselves have made tremendous advances with technology. Because once upon a time, in order for the fireworks to go off, somebody with some fire had to walk down and light the fuses. And I don't know how this happened, but one year my dad volunteered or was volunteered to be that guy. They, they, get, they give him the fire stick and they make him walk down the lane and he just he's tripping things and blowing up things. And when he comes back, well, let's just say in today's cancel culture, he would have been canceled because he was definitely wearing blackface. <laughs> I... I have worn blackface unbeknownst to me. Me, we, in, again, in Jacksonville uh, on, I think it was Thursdays, just to get out of the office. But also, it was value added. Me and Blake Cunningham, we would get on the ATVs and we'd go for a ride around the base. We would do, we would go places where our patrol vehicles couldn't go and we'd come across crazy stuff. It was a, real. It was real. We were really doing real work. We came across a car one time in a place where that should have never been. So anyway, one Thursday, we're out. We're having a good time. I almost got killed out there. Different story. We're having a good time. We're tearing it up. He's in front. I'm in front. I don't realize it, but, oh, this was a Wednesday. This was definitely a Wednesday because we had Seawall Wednesday, and we would go to the Chiefs mess on Wednesdays, and we would solve the problems of the world one beer at a time. All the Chiefs would meet up at the, at the Chiefs club on Wednesdays, and we drank our beers. So I'm sitting in the, in the Chiefs Club after a long day of work and riding government-provided ATVs. And a female chief friend of mine goes, hey, uh, your, your face is, like, really dirty. I was like, yeah, we, we were out on the ATVs, you know, today. Uh, yeah, I, I, I know. Just, yeah, it'll be fine. And then she comes to me later and is like, Tony, your face is, like, really dirty. 
I was like, yeah, I know, I know. Remember I told you we were out on the ATVs having a good time? And then, and then someone else came to me and said, wow, Tony, you're... Uh, face is really dirty. And I've got a couple of beers in me at this point, so I need to go to the bathroom anyway. I go to the bathroom, and I'm just like... I'm like, are you kidding me? Are, are you... Uh, there is a difference between you got some dirt on your face and you're wearing blackface. That's, there is a, a, a huge difference. It, it wasn't, there wasn't a little smidgen of dirt on me. I was completely browned out with the exception of my lips and eyeballs. If I knew, <laughs> if I knew any Al Jolson songs uh, or impressions, that's, that's the time I should have been doing them. The only thing I was missing was the white lips. I was that daggone black. <laughs> what happened? Uh, it just, it just happened. It was, we, you know, uh, I was particularly sweaty. It was a hot day, uh, got caught up in a dust cloud. That may have been the day when the ATV uh, almost killed me. I, I don't know. I don't know what it was. And the thing about an ATV almost killing you is those things, in case you don't know, they're kind of heavy. Yeah. Yeah. And it, and it doesn't take much to flip them. It really doesn't. I, uh, I almost got killed by like a twig. A tiny, are designed to flip. <laughs> a tiny, tiny little twig almost took me out. Uh, we go down steep down into a valley. We are coming up steep on the other side, and I see the tiny little twig. It's nothing but a mere morsel of a tree. It's right in the center line of the ATV as I go up this really steep hill, and it was just enough to go. Nope. And just, just, it, it, it just, just knocked me. Uh, I remember, uh, you know, there's a couple of seconds here in microseconds that happen. The ATV is, is now beyond 90 degrees. So I'm, I have fallen off. And luckily, I fell in a relatively soft spot about six feet below me. And then, here comes the ATV, and I guarantee you, if you look at the ATVs in the police department at NAS Jacks right now, one of them still has my boot print in it, because I, I saw it was coming right at me. It's coming right at me. Uh, I was going to get crushed underneath that ATV just on a, on a work day, just out goofing off a little bit. It came back down on me. I saw it was getting ready to crush me. I put my feet up in the air, and I waved them like I just didn't care, and uh, kicked that bad boy to the side and lived to tell the story of the day a twig almost killed me. Since then, many people have tried, and no one has succeeded. I tried. All right. In uh, central Pennsylvania, we have these things called lantern flies. Um, oh, yeah. Not lightning bugs. Not uh, What's another thing for a lightning bug? Another name? Firefly. F yeah, not a firefly fly, not a lightning bug, a lantern fly, which you think would be cool that would lighten up. They're not. They're an invasive species. And everybody wants you to kill them. I've never seen such an aggressive campaign to kill creatures on this planet as these daggone lightning fly or lantern flies. We have them in Jersey, too. And my Uncle Bart, beside himself, he's, they're eating my plants. They're eating my trees. They're eating everything. He hates them. So uh, I got him one of those assault guns for Christmas. Uh-huh. I was like, you can just sit on your porch and you can just shoot him. And he's like, I've never really liked guns. I love this thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, they, they're, you know, as far as bugs go, they're pretty. They're not, they're not an ugly creature. And I came out of the office on Friday. I had, an, I had an appointment I had to go to. And there is a very, very large lantern fly on my hood. Okay. He will fly off. That's, that's the only thing going through my head. He's going to fly off at any given point in this ride. But, you know, let's see. Let's just, uh, let's give it a little test and see, see it. At what point does he decide enough is enough? Because I'm in this bug's brain like, hey, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm in his brain. So I get it up to about 40 miles an hour and he's still hanging on. But I'm on the base. So I'm already speeding ridiculously and I don't want to cause a problem there. But I get off the base and I get up on the highway. Giddy up. Uh, let's see. You want to hold on? Let's see. And he, I see him turn his body and face full on face into the wind. Like 
if aerodynamic, aerodynamic, if there were f- uh, flowing locks of hair behind him, he could have been my hood ornament on a Rolls Royce. He is, he is in position, and I've got the heads-up display tachometer or speedometer. I got the heads-up display tachometer, and fifty-five. He's in 60, 65, 70, 75. All right, let's push it. 80, 85. This bad, in the speed, there's only 55, right? (laughs) And and I am trying to find out how, what is the tongue style strength of this little guy's legs? And I am getting it. Now I'm at 90. I'm coming up on 95. I'm about to go triple digits and I run out of road. I have a choice. I could get off the highway and go make my appointment, or I could take this bug for the ride of his life. He still got the ride of his life. <laughs> I'm always amazed at how long, and like, when I, there's a bug on my windshield or on the hood of my car, I always do the same thing. They just hold on. He never, he never gave up the fight. He held on the entire time. I pulled into UPMC there, and there was a stranger walking by, and I said, I just gave that bug the ride of his life. <laughs> of course, you know, they got like a two-week lifespan if they're not murdered by all of the people in Pennsylvania. You know when you, like a fly gets in your car or something, and you like go far away? Yes. And then the fly goes out. Do you ever think like, huh, I wonder if we just stole him from his home? M- many, many times I have thought that, especially in Georgia. When you're taking a bug, you know, 15, 30, 45 miles away. I don't know why I decided to count 15s there. But you're taking them a long distance from where you picked them up, and they get off, and they're in a completely different neighborhood. And you don't know. You don't know what kind of clicks the bugs got against each other, you know. (laughs) You're dropping them off in a a different gang neighborhood. You don't know. Yeah, and they're just like, um, but where, where's my home? (laughs) Like, I always feel really bad. (laughs) It was, it was. We're going the other direction. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, saddle up and ride, bad boy. If you want to go back, get on board. Ride or die. It's a whole new thing. Uh, But one point on that drive, I was like, if he if he tries to fly away at this point, he's definitely going to he's going to get that windshield. There's no I know I was speeding, but hear me out. (laughs) (laughs) There is no safe way he could have left the safety of that hood at that speed. He would just he would have just been a dash on the windshield. I had someone recently, Mark, I'm not gonna say Mark's last name because he's kind of important. He got to ride in a plaid. Not not impressive to me. I I didn't think anything of it, but when he came back from the ride in the plaid, he was ecstatic. He was so full of joy at the giddy up and go in the Tesla plaid. But I asked him, and I'm asking you, aren't aren't all Teslas the same when it comes to the giddy up and go? Don't they all have that instant acceleration? But it depends on which model you get as to how many seconds you get from zero to 60. And you can also buy an accelerator boost, and it's literally just a software update. So it, it depends on the car. Does that make you angry? I don't care. <laughs> that would make me angry. If I bought a car that had all of that capability, but I had to pay more money to use it. It's there, but I can't use it unless I give them more money. It's like the uh, self-driving things and all the other things you have to pay extra money for. Didn't you pay enough for the car? Do they have to nickel and dime you to death on all these little things? I will never, I will never buy a Tesla. Never, never, (laughs) never. I mean, I don't, like, I, the car is fast. It it is what it is. Right. The car is just fast. And it, it goes, and when you, like, the first week I got it, or, or the first week I had it with plates, I'll say, because I don't have plates. <laughs> not even around the block, because I don't have enough Spanish to like explain my way out of any of that. But I like was getting on the highway, head, headed towards base, and I just like thinking I'm in the Subaru, put the put the pedal down to get on the highway, and oh my lanta, I left my butthole at the bottom of the. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone says, oh, it's so fast. Oh, it's so fast. You're going to just rock it on out of there. I was like, oh, yeah, just driving, you know, the like 13 year old Subaru. Not the same. They were not the same at all. What kind of Subaru did you have? Uh, Subaru Legacy. Okay. It was, I married into that car. It was I didn't purchase that car. So I'm finding out here in America that the Subarus are kind of synonymous. With hippies and lesbians. <laughs> 
I actually heard an acronym the other day I had never heard before, an LAV. And I was like, an LAV? What what is an LAV? It's like a lesbian assault vehicle. <laughs> I can't believe it's never it was one, it's such an old joke and it's just it's like the U-Haul joke. It's kind of the same thing, but it's funny because... Okay, you're going to have to... First of all, never heard that joke, so it's new to me, and as far as the U-Haul joke, I haven't heard that one either. You're the comedian. Don't you go people over and over all the time? It's- no, I, I, there are things I miss out on. There are, you know, so, so tell me about the U-Haul. That, so the, the, the U-Haul joke is that, you know, lesbians bring the U-Haul on the second date. Super quick to move in together, and they're married, like, immediately. That's, that's the U-Haul joke. Okay. The Subaru joke has been around forever. The best part about like when I was driving the Subaru was I married into the Subaru. It would have never been a it was never been a choice for me. It was my father in law's car originally. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he had that car, passed it along to the manager. When the manager got the mini, I got the Subaru because of the Peugeot debacle. Right. Because we all know I would probably still be driving that Peugeot. You love the Peugeot. I did love that car so much. It was such a fun car to drive. I always thought it was fun that Peugeot and Lowenbrow shared symbols. You got. <laughs> <laughs> what else did you do this weekend? I did some stuff. What did you do? Oh, I uh, I went to the adult arcade and um, mm-hmm. I did really, really well. So well. That is, as soon as we finish up here, I'm uh, going to the adult arcade again. I uh, listened to my uh, my preferred podcast out there. I listened to the $18 podcast with Chris and Ralph, and I listened to the DNR podcast with Damien and uh, Ron. God, <laughs> I had a slip up recently where I had to edit a little bit because I accidentally called Ron Kane Rob Kane, and I was like, "Ah, that's that's an easy that's an easy edit. I'll just take off the vowel at the end." <laughs> so, <laughs> if you listen really close, what you hear is Rock Kane, uh, R- Rogue Kane. <laughs> it's just there's there's a there's clearly a missing con- consonant between his first and his last name, and as always. You know, when they give us a shout out and I give them a sh- it's it's a it's a mutually beneficial relationship. And I tell you, I tell you the names of these podcasts because people out there may enjoy them. They're different and in their own ways. The 18 hour podcasts are two brothers that are just talking it up. It's clean and it's it, it's fun. It's entertaining. You may enjoy it. Give it a check and check it out. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. The DNR podcast is a little bit more local, a little bit more comedy and uh, not clean. So, you know, if viewer discretion be advised, but if you're not offended by that, by all means, check them out, especially if you're in the central Pennsylvania area where you could find out the haps on upcoming comedy shows by the people that are producing them and doing them. So I listened to them. I got in a little Joe Rogan this weekend. I don't, I've gotten away from listening to Rogan as much, but he had Oliver Anthony on. And I wanted to, I wanted to know a little something about the guy. And that, was, that, that helped up eat up some of my drive. And it was a very interesting interview, and I enjoyed it. Plus, you know, I've been posting on the fan page, you know, trying to get someone to come on to be interviewed. I guess I didn't explain it good enough. What I was saying, listeners, ladies and gentlemen, those of you out there, any of you can be a guest on the show. And we wanted to talk about our interviewing skills and abilities, and we were inviting any of you to come on the show. You didn't have to promote something. You didn't have to have anything. You didn't even have to use your real name. You were just going to be a test dummy. <laughs> <You're> just, <laughs> I'm not calling you a dummy. They not dummies, and they avoided that catastrophe. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it would be fun, and I wanted to try it out, and it, and it, it didn't work. But we're, or we'll try it again next week. We're, we're opening it up. If you got, if you get, you want to, you want to be a guest on the show. You can be you. You can be a character of you, or or anything. We want you on. So yeah, the with the exception of that, making salad, and I'm cooking my chicken right now, and that's going to be followed up by cooking my. I mean, my my weekend duties were were pretty simple. I got really upset with Hulu. Oh. Yeah, I got I got upset with Hulu because they're getting ready to jack up their prices. And I don't like it when the prices get jacked up. I didn't sign up for jacked up prices. And 
I, I wrote them a nasty letter and said, you know what? For the $8 a month that you could have gotten more out of me, you're going to lose the $70 a month I already pay you. I'm not, I'm not doing it. On October 12th, I am canceling. I will find another way. Or I will adjust my palate. I will, you know, I watch the things I watch now because I can watch them. But if I can't watch them anymore, I'm going to be all right. I'll find another way. Military missing out on television that the rest of the world talked about. And now everyone has access to this, but they want to raise it for like really pennies on the dollar because like, well, we're going to create new content. I didn't ask for that. Well, <laughs> the the, content is not what I want. I, you, you didn't ask me. This I didn't ask happening. for Disney plus. I didn't ask for Disney plus. I didn't ask for ESPN plus, but they're included in the package that I just want. I, I'm a, you know, you know me. Oh, BB. A basic. <laughs> I, I don't want all that. I want the basic. I don't want. I just get angry when I think about it. When I came back to the States and people were paying $200 a month for Internet and cable minimum. I was like, I, I'm not doing that. I'll read a book. I'll do something with my time instead of just give that money. That's a lot of money. So our cable that we pay for here. We pay $160 a year. Oh, oh, okay. Year. I thought you... And then monthly we pay $60 for internet. But all our cable, which is like one bazillion channels, internet ca internet cable, it's all from Britain. We have UK But you don't watch TV. Why do you pay that much? Because it makes our internet cheaper. But it makes our internet cheaper than it would be to pay the, the additional for the internet, then you know, it, the math is mathing, but it doesn't math. Th it doesn't math, exactly. It's there. If I want it, it's there. But I don't feel like $160 a year compared to what you pay in the States. I mean, I the box is there. I can plug it in. I could watch Naked Dating, which is probably the one thing I watched when we first got the cable. I was like, oh, Naked Dating, that must be... Like, what? what is that joke? And then I, was, I realized that it is exactly what it says it is. It was not a joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and with the cell phones, you know, we had a cell phone play. I loved, well, I, I loved being a government employee that was so important that gave me a phone. And that was my life for at least the last 15 years. Until we moved back to the States, I had a government provided cell phone. And for the most part, I didn't do anything with that cell phone other than phone until I got to Korea and the government gave me a smartphone. And then I started to enjoy life a little bit more. Because I could do so much more. And I always had a smartphone after that. Or in, in Spain, for the 10 years I was there, they they gave me a, a cheap little phone. But they also gave me a chip that I could put in the phone of my choice. So I had a great phone, picked up the Wi-Fis, and, and it did the phone yep. stuff. And I enjoyed that. And get back to the okay. States, I got to buy a phone. $20 a month for my cell phone service. Is how much you pay? Mm -hmm. The that cheapest I could get... And minutes and texts. I, I've never run. And unlike in the States where they like start to throttle your data when you get close. And then they start to charge you extra little like chunks of data. Like have, have a gig for $5. A, a gig? What? <laughs> the cheapest I, I could get when I got back to the States was T-Mobile's military magenta plan, which was 50 bucks a phone a month. All right. Well, that, that worked. And, and we got great service with T-Mobile. But I'm seeing all of these other things out there where the, the same package that we're paying for is cheaper. Okay. $15 a month, you know, $150 plus the extra. So that's $145 a year. $15 a month makes a difference, especially when it's two lines. You're talking almost $300 that we're just giving away because of the convenience of T-Mobile. Now, T-Mobile did include Netflix for free. And we You're got, that. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> yes, You're you, paying that. You're paying $30 a month for that. And guess what? Netflix isn't $30 a month. No, yet, it, but next Tuesday it will be $30 a month. It isn't. So, it, and, and I didn't need it. I didn't need the Netflix. So we went to Verizon and Verizon and their military plan, same plan, unlimited talk, text and data, $35 a month. After, if you go with their internet, if you go, you know, if you package all of this stuff together, and uh, it comes down to $35 a month. But in, in the end, per line, plus all the other money that you spend, 
and I'm spending way too much. And then I have to pay for Netflix because somebody likes her Netflix. And then I got to pay for the Peacock and I got to pay for the Paramount and, I, and the Hulus. And what, wouldn't you know, all said and done, I'm paying 300 freaking dollars a month for the stuff I did not want to do. <laughs> It's just so frustrating, but it is the life that we live. And I've got all, I've got Amazon Prime, which we pay for, and that gives us Amazon, and that allows me to put the little thing on all the TVs. And there's a lot of TV we can watch for free. But you don't have enough time because you have to go to the casino and then to work to make the money to pay for all the things that you don't have time to watch. Wait, wait, let's stop talking about you. Let's talk about what I did this weekend. Oh, okay. <laughs> Enough about you. Let's talk about me. I had so much fun this weekend. I worked, but I didn't work my normal job. As you can see, I'm not wearing a blue polo. I'm wearing a red t-shirt. Um, I spent this week promoting my friend Brian's gin at the, at the Mini Next. Oh. An absolute blast. I really, I mean, I was a brand ambassador for seven years, and I... As much as of an introvert as I am in like my personal life, professionally, I love talking to people. I love seeing them try new things and hearing about their week. But the best part, in addition to talking about booze all weekend, the Roosevelt came back in to port and all of my favorite sailors were back and they were all getting ready for their like welcome home party. So I saw them all. It was a great weekend. Just being a brand ambassador for a gin that you didn't tell us the name of. Oh, yeah. No, I'm going to tell you more about the gin. <laughs> my friend Brian up in Barcelona, he and I served together in the reserves. Super cool guy. Very nerdy. Studies and learns everything to the nth degree. Talking to him is like super fun. Always learning new things. So his gin is called Corpin, Navy signal flag for a change of direction. All of his gins are named after winds that cut through Spain. The Levante being the most commonly referred to one. Hence, the name of his most popular gin, Levant. And if any of our European listeners are interested, they're available at almost all of the exchanges and APs in Europe, except for Signilla, which is doing whatever it wants to do. One day you could try it when you come back to visit me. I heard you say something that makes me think that uh, something is lost in translation. I believe Levant, Levant is different than Levante. I didn't say that it was the Levante winds. I said that's the most common wind. No, you said the name of it was Levant. The name of the gin. Right. All of the gins are named after winds. They're not the exact names. They're, what are you getting for Levant? <laughs> so uh, Levante and Levant are definitely two different things. And, and, and while I'm fact checking you real quick, let's a uh, quick reminder. What is that from last week? You senators do not get free health care for life. I said, I don't think that's right when you said it. And you said it's right. And, and that's not that's not the best way to, to settle an argument. So I researched it while I was edit it was funny because while I'm editing the show, I'm like, oh, I should probably check on that. And yeah, they, they, they don't. They have to pay into it just like everybody else. Is theirs better? I'm sure it is, but But it doesn't matter. They are covered more so and easily more easily than other people. Why do they get that? Why do you get to pay why do everyone else have to pay their salary? And they still get, it, it's just, we don't need senators. We don't actually need them. <laughs> hey, uh, do you know anybody that was maybe in Morocco this weekend? No, thank goodness, because that is wild. That is wild. Uh, if you've ever been to Morocco, you'll know that everything there looks like it could crumble at any given second. And then, <laughs> then when, uh, when Christina's trying to move us out of the path of an asteroid and shakes up the planet a little bit, because, no, you know, I wouldn't do that. You, yeah, move Earth. That was the easy solution, remember? No, that's still the easy solution. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, it shakes up a little bit. And, and uh, as a John Cougar Mellencamp song would say, the walls came a crumbling down. I don't know what the, the death toll on that is, but the last I looked, it was upwards of 800 and then reinforced concrete cannot stress that enough reinforced poured concrete is the building material all human beings should be using at this point reinforced poured concrete 
Oh, that's not uh, okay. I got you. Yeah, I thought I thought you weren't going to discuss it. Uh, I would show you a screenshot. Hey, I have to explain to everybody what's going on because they don't know. So she just showed me. <laughs> she just showed me a screen where it says Levant equals wind, and I'm looking at a screen that says the Levant is an approximate historical geographical term referring to a large area in the eastern Mediterranean region of West Asia. It is it is narrowest since which it is used today in archaeological and other cultural contents. It is equivalent to Cyprus and a stretch of land bordering the Mediterranean Sea in Western Asia. That's what I have for Levant. She has Levant in parentheses wind. We both know Levantes. We both know that winds that rip through southern Spain are known as Levantes, and they're like hurricane force winds on a Tuesday. They just they just come out of nowhere and they, they will rattle you. And those homes are made with reinforced poured concrete, and they're safe to be inside during the Levantes or the earthquakes or the hurricanes. Those, that's what the material the houses need to be. I can't believe at this stage in our evolution, we still have people making homes out of sticks, permanent homes. Well, you know, if they fall down or they catch on fire, then that means you have to do it all over again. And that means more money for someone. It's like a side effect. I think I told you that we're doing the roofing quotes. Yeah. I had a couple of guys come in. Nice guys. I'm not going to I'm not going to name their company. They asked about the show. I gave them the information on the show. Maybe they're listening to the show. Who knows? But I got uh, Kane. And, and, and Abel, uh, his, name, his name isn't Abel, but and they would be a great team if they came in. Hey, I'm Kane. I'm Abel. That would be a great team. Who's, who's going to murder each other? They came in. Actually, his name should have been Cock Diesel because this boy was, uh, he was a big old boy. <laughs> I can't remember his name. And he wants to be on the roof that you're replacing. <laughs> I, I, I wanted them to replace the roof and, and they came in. And they gave us their spiel, and they're good guys. I enjoyed talking to them. I enjoyed making them laugh. They they pretended to laugh, you know, as a salesman would do. They pretended, oh, you're the funniest, Tony. You're the funniest. We had a good time. But then they came back with the numbers, and those numbers didn't work. Those, those, numbers, those like, numbers did not work at all. Those numbers weren't even in the ballpark of numbers that could possibly work. And I, and I just as politely as I could, with a little, you know, with a little humor, I was like, this, this, these ain't going to work, guys. You're not even close. This is not, this is not how it's going to work. We're, we're going to have to end this discussion. And, and they gave it a, a couple more shots trying to sell their product. I get it. I so think. We never have to hear this guy's jokes again. <laughs> I think I get pleasure now having done this so many times. I think I'm just going to start calling anybody that's offering a free estimate on anything. I'm going to get free gutters. Come on down. Uh, free, <laughs> free water softener. Come on down. I want all of the free estimate people to come and pay me a visit, to sit at my table, to laugh at my jokes and Unfortunately, I'm going to have to tell all of them no, except like one person is Just going to get to roof show. this house. Just invite them on the show. Be like, I need you to come on this day at this time. And then just we'll just do the show and we'll just grill them on the show. And it'll be a forced interview and they can promote their business, whether or not you say no or yes. Irrelevant. <laughs> I went out to Happy Feet uh, and... and <laughs> We're going we're going kind of long on our uh, catching up segment. And that's what this is. The first the first 30 minutes of the show is just usually me and Chick Brew catching up and sharing with you, the audience, what we're catching up on. I will I will save my happy feed story for a future episode. It's probably time we move towards some other segments. Is there any particular segment that you'd like to start off with this week? Ooh. It's time to talk about cooking. And tonight, prove one thing. You know, f*** all. Our friend Chick Brew is a board-certified sanctimonious chef. She uh, she went to the schools. She learns how to slice and dice and, and, and spatchcock her way through life. She gives us the professional aspect of food, and I, as an expert connoisseur of said food, give you mine. So we, we talk each week about food. Chick Brew, 
What uh, what what was on your food journey this week? So the only thing that school did not teach me was the art of saying no to an order that is too large, too short notice, and on really bad timing. <laughs> so I earlier this week, um, even though I worked my regular like almost forty hours in addition to working all weekend for Brian. Then was like, yeah, I can do an order of 80 cookies. Frosted, the problem with rainbow. being a people pleaser. In addition to 80 cupcakes frosted with rainbow. Uh, yeah, I could definitely do that. <laughs> no, I mean, I can, but no. Oh, my God, no. I, I, I can do your nose for you. I'm good at nose. I am good at nose. You you have a proposal, you send me the proposal, and then off on the side of the proposal you say, I can't do this. And I will formulate the response to say, I am sorry, uh, but at this present juncture, this is, uh, I, I can't fill this order. I would do that for you. See, people, I don't know if it's like, if I like release a pheromone or something. <laughs> like, She's weak. She's feeling weak. I can, I can smell oh. capitulation. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was like thinking about some stuff I got coming up and I was like, oh, yeah, you know, like. I could probably use some extra money. Right. But I mean, uh, the 80 cookies, I, I, even in your small Spanish stove, I think you could have done 80 cookies. I think you could have done that. But the 80 cupcakes, man. I know. I think I'm going to have to hit the base. I think I'm going to have to hit the base homies and be like, hey, I'm here for your oven. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. But mm, I don't know. What Do you, you and you. I'm also working Monday and Tuesday from 12 to 10. Do you Tuesday. charge a premium or will you start charging a premium fee for people who ask you to do something that even Gordon Ramsay wouldn't ask the contestants on the show to do because he gives them an hour to get something done and and these people are giving you an order of 160 units <laughs> i know and like there should be a premium can't... fee uh, there should be a last minute fee you can't prep it out, right? If you cook them too soon, they will be disgusting. And then it's your name that's on there. Ugh. For the person that had, the, you know, the cupcakes that were in the refrigerator for two days or the cookies that dried out. Like, you can't, you have to cook it, like, up to the line. Otherwise, you made trash. I'm not a baker. I, uh, I'll, I'll admit, when it comes to all of my kitchen skills, bake, baking is not one of them. Or what? what is the thing I, I have failed to make uh, many, many times? The little... Pair of shoes. <laughs> the pair of shoes. Yeah, I'm not good at those either. <laughs> you own uh, pair of shoes. <laughs> so, can you prep uh, enough so that on the day of the cookie cooking, it's just uh, shake and bake? You know, can you can you do all the prep work so that it's just you know, Toll House cookies. What are the cookies that come in the roll that you just, you slice, you put on a thing and you bake them? Uh, Pillsbury. Yeah. Can you do that level of prep so that on the day of the cook, it's that simple? That's what I'm doing tonight. So tonight I'm making cookie dough. Okay. And then. Don't eat it. I know you're, I, I know you're in love with the cookie dough. <laughs> 87 chins later, I have eaten an entire army of cookies raw. Um, so I'm going to. Prep my cookie dough tonight. I'm going to roll it and I'm going to cut them and I'm going to layer them with parchment paper, seal them airtight bag so that they don't dry out. And then tomorrow I will bake them off. And as I'm baking them and they have cooled, I will frost and sprinkle. That's Monday. Tuesday, I will bake the cupcakes, all of them, because they will need to cool all the way down. So Tuesday night before I go to bed, I will bake all of the cupcakes. And then how many morning, cupcakes how can you cup cake at one time? I can bake because it's Spanish oven. I can only bake one dozen at a time. 160. That's 10. How long do they? I can only bake about well, if I can do 10 size wise. If I bring the size down just a bit, I can do 12. How long does it take to cook a cupcake? A cupcake is 24 minutes. A cookie is six to eight. Man, there's some complex math going on in my head here, just trying to figure out how much time you're doing nothing but baking. Oh, it's a lot. So luckily I can, with the cupcakes, you have the tray ready to go for the next one, right? Like as soon as one goes in the oven, you start filling the cups for the next one. As soon as that one comes out, you let the, temp the oven come back up to temperature and you throw the next one in. And while the next one is cooking, 
the other ones are cooling, at least enough for you to take them out and you're refilling. It's a pretty... In the time it takes you to pull out your baked cupcakes and to put in a fresh pan of cupcakes, the temperature loses that much heat that you have to wait for it to catch back up? I mean, you should. You should let it make sure it comes back up to temperature. But we're just talking the amount of time it takes to open the door, pull out something, to put in something. Wouldn't that happen if, if you got it back up to temperature? It's not so bad. But in the winter, it's pretty quick. But when you open the door to put the cupcakes in that you waited to get back up to temperature, wouldn't you have the same issue? Yeah. I don't know. That's very complicated and confusing to me. I don't want to. I don't want to learn how to bake. I am good not knowing how to bake. I want you to make a pair of shoes. <laughs> I that the season is coming back. I'm going to be making those in October, and I think we should uh, have a little FaceTime and make them together. I haven't done any food videos in a while. I know. I did you see Ben's food video the other day? I did not. Oh, he made chicken chicken tenders, but instead of bread, he's pork rinds because it's keto. Oh wow. Oh, yeah. I I am contemplating a, a new series of videos. So fried rice. For some reason, fried rice has, has been elevated to some kind of gourmet status. There's there's a, a British comedian out there of Vietnamese descent or, or a Thai. I believe. Ing, no, it's not Vietnamese. I think he's Taiwanese or uh, Hong Kong. Well, anyway, he, he is... He's a comedian. He has an alternate character called Uncle Roger. And Uncle Roger. Yes. And he destroys people who are making fried rice. But when I was in China, I learned that fried rice is just leftovers. It's just leftovers. It's not it's not something that needs to be elevated. And, you know, and he starts all of his things with, uh, you know, you're doing a good thing if you're making it with cold rice. Well, cold rice is leftover rice. And I have gotten really good at making fried rice. And as I was making my fried rice this morning, I was like, these would be interesting videos that would be critiqued because they're not following the use a wok and uh, way and feng shui or whatever. His, I haven't watched any of his videos in a while. I, I did. It. I have enjoyed his videos. I'm not lying about that. Real good. But like this morning, I, I'm using brown rice because brown rice is better for you than white rice. Yeah. So, so I'm using brown rice. I'm using salad, spring salad, straight spring salad. I'm putting that in there. I've got a couple of mushrooms chopped up in there. I've got a Nathan's hot dog that is a uh, 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 spatch cotted nicely to provide a protein. Yeah, I got the the, the rice, the salad the mushrooms, and a hot dog in, in, in this wonderful concoction and a little low-sodium soy sauce. And it's fantastic. It's, it's the right quantity. It's not too much. It's filling. Uh, it's tasty. Oh, and some kimchi. I also put some kimchi in there. <laughs> it's got- I, always, I always end up making fried rice when I'm at Drill because the food from the mess hall is like Subway or Taco Bell. But can we agree that fried rice is whatever you want? I, so I'm, I'm saying like they don't have a lot of protein options there. And I'm going to eat. I end up eating it like throughout the week because I can only eat so much Subway and Taco Bell in one week before I just feel like complete trash. So I always end up making fried rice. And for my protein, it's always spam. <laughs> I love spam. Yeah, spam. And I just want like I chop it up real fine. And I put it in first and get it all caramelized, and then I add it to the rice. It's so good. Spam and mushrooms, and I love like the 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 carrots and the peas. I I, I could probably make. I have probably made a hundred different varieties of fried rice, and none of them follow any singular formula. It all depends on what leftovers I have in the fridge. My protein could be chicken. My protein could be shrimp. It could be a hot dog. And the, the, the thing with the hot dog is Costco had a great sale on Nathan's. So I've got, you know, like 12 pounds of freaking hot dogs. And I just, uh, I take one and I spatchcock it up real nicely, spatchcock it up real nicely. And it, it, it provides a flavorful protein. And believe it or not, w- one Nathan's hot dog is only 180 calories. Now, it's probably got way too much sodium in it, but it's only 180 calories. Got the low sodium soy sauce. You're all right. 
I did. That's the balance you're always looking for. I got the low sodium is the soy sauce. I'm all about balance. All right. So that's uh, that's enough talking about cooking this week. It's time to move on to another segment. How about this? And now it is time for headlines from around the globe. There are a lot of headlines out there. Every week, Chick Brew scours the Internet and finds headlines throughout the world that may be of interest. She shares them with me, who has never seen them before, and then I give you my take. My take is involved to be my my take is in, intended to be uh, humorous, uh, educational. It all depends on what the headline is and what I could pull out of my monkey brain. So, with that being said, you got a headline for me? Of course. Man arrested after trying to run from Florida to London in makeshift hamster wheel. <laughs> all right. Uh, first of all, they arrested him. They didn't arrest him. In Florida, we have this thing called the Baker Act, named for Secretary James Baker. No, it's not. The Baker Act is something in Florida that law enforcement officers use to take people who are mentally unstable and commit them to a facility that can help them out. And this person who thought he could use a hamster wheel on a couple of floaties to cross the Atlantic Ocean clearly, clearly uh, needed to be Baker acted. It needed to be uh, apprehended, taken into custody. First of all, I want to see, I so want to see a picture of this hamster wheel because I can see it in my brain. I see the hamster wheel. I see a couple of pontoon floaties off to the side. I see the guy and say, you know, it's, got, it's a paddle wheel, hamster wheel, but he's 1000% not prepared. There's no rigging. There's no lighting. There's no storage. There's no protection from the elements. I see somebody who smoked a lot of cannabis coming up with a brilliant idea of, man, I'll just, it ain't no problem. I'll just walk to London, man. I'll just walk there. I, I'll put out a wheel and some floaties, <laughs> and I'll just walk there, man. Because on the map, it doesn't look that far, right? But it is far. It's very far. And it's an ocean, a very large ocean. So this guy got arrested for his own protection. Do you have a picture of the... I do, but even better. I I found this article and was thrilled <laughs> because I've actually watched a documentary on this guy. This is not the first time he's tried this. There is a doc, and it's probably like four or five years old now. Um, for, I think Vice covered it. it. He's been doing this for years. He's been trying this. What is his nickname? Time, Hamster Wheel Man or Hamster Man? or Every time he tries it, it, uh, it ends poorly. <laughs> <laughs> so she does <laughs> she does she does have a picture and uh, much like last week when we talked about something and it was a uh, true we actually attached a link to the story. So last week, last week we talked about Ozzy man covering down on the the great cheese race uh, down the hill and we were thinking about reaching out to him and asking if he could cover it. Turns out he already did. And when I found it, I just took that link and I posted it next to the uh, last week's episode. It is quite entertaining, but it is typical Aussie man and not uh, there's a language warning. That's all I'll say about that. So we'll we'll post this story about Hamster Wheel Man uh, on uh, on the, the, the comment section of this week's episode. You got another headline for me? Naked. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what the headline is, but I like the way it starts. <laughs> Naked cyclist arrested on charity bike ride. Are you kidding me? We're not doing back-to-back -back weeks of me telling you what a bad idea it is to ride a bicycle naked. We're doing it. No, we're not. I need another headline. <laughs> well, he was arrested. You have to. <laughs> he was arrested. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that this is at the naked bike ride thing, right? No, no, no. This is a completely different. This is this is Sky News. This is a completely different news source. Okay. Well, uh, last week we covered the people in Philadelphia, a whole bunch of dummies who got together and put their soft and moist parts on leather seats and rode <laughs> rode, rode bicycles across the city naked because somebody convinced them that was a good idea. This guy apparently read the story and thought he was liberated enough that whatever country he lives in, probably Germany, he just, uh, he just North took, Wales. what is it? 
North Wales. North Wales. He just took his twigs and berries and his naked anus and, and sat that upon a leather seat and went to uh, chim chimney, chim chimney, chim chim chiru. And of course he's fat and ugly. Of course. Uh, yeah, she shows me the picture. I already knew what he looked like without showing me the picture. He's he ain't got no hair and he's probably got a tiny you know member there and uh, he, he don't have he, anything too much. You don't want to get product. Yeah, he's probably got some stretch nuts going on. There is a surgery that you could do to fix that problem. Now, gentlemen, as you get older, gravity does grab your testes and and brings them closer and closer to the ground. There is now a surgery that we have found out through this show. And tell us more about your surgery, Tony. I haven't I haven't scheduled it yet. I figured once once my ticker's working correctly again, then we can work on uh on, on a nut lift. <laughs> Just like one. <laughs> Next time you have to surgery, you just be like, and if you could, I'd like to only go under anesthesia one time. So. Oh, to do them both at the same time. Yes. Uh, yeah. the, the name for that. <laughs> A heart nut job. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want the specialist who would be uh, raising my testes two feet off the plant, uh, off the the floor, to uh, be in the same room as the people who are working on my ticker. I, I, th- that's a that's a cross pollination of specialists that I don't want in the room at the same time because I the only thing that I walk out a woman that's that's what happens when I, I got somebody working on my 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 testes and my my heart at the same time I'm going to end up with a pair of knockers and and no testes and uh uh walking out there named Tanya it was just a whole crisis because <laughs> everything that you know and love will have to be gone <laughs> Then the, yeah, the next thing you know, I'm I'm buying a, a Subaru. <laughs> they run forever. They run forever. So you know, maybe do. There's a there's a, yeah, there's no way if that if that accidental surgery does occur. Well, l- lesbian it is because that's the that's the that's the only route I'm going. <laughs> All right, we've done our headlines for this week. Let's move on to the book of everything. Every week we dive deep randomly into the book of everything to find something of interest that you may not have ever known before in your Liz life. So uh, when we find something that's super interesting, it sticks with you forever and a day. And uh, if we don't find anything that interests you, well, you know, here's, here's 10 seconds you won't get back. Starting with uh, number one, fact number one, established writers and artists are 18 times more likely to kill themselves than the general population. Writers and artists are 18 times more likely to kill themselves than the general population. That statistic right there, you know, they they work so hard to fight suicides in the military, that right there should just end all of the artsy uh, ratings and specialties in the military. They should get rid of all of them. No. Yes, yes. You you are either an engineer or a, a, a boat peddler or a hamster wheel maker. There's no more no more arts and crafts in the military. And another reason to get rid of the military bands. I know. I know. They are coming here soon. <laughs> $750 million a year wasted on military bands. Yep. And uh, changes. I mean... <laughs> I'm going to switch pages because these uh, facts are tended to be grouped together. Here we go. The words written on Twitter. So Elon Musk changed the symbol of Twitter to an X. And they say he changed the name of the company to X. And no matter who they are, they always say X, formerly known as Twitter. Oh, like- It's still Twitter. It's still Twitter. It's still tweeting. It's still twats. Tweets and twats, that's what you got. Isn't my dog. <laughs> yes, it is. is dog? <laughs> yes. The words written on Twitter every day would fill a 10 million page book. I've only contributed to that twice. <laughs> I think I've only tweeted twice in like the what 15 years i've had a twitter account yeah we've both had twitter accounts since the get-go i i did for the for 
amplifying our signal. I do let the Twitterverse know whenever we upload a new episode. But for the most part, unless I'm just reactionary, the former vice president... Uh, Dick Cheney decided to come on there and called Donald Trump a coward. And I couldn't resist, you know, making my comments about him. <laughs> Is he still alive? I yeah, he's still alive. He, you know, he shoots people in the face, gets away with it, shoots his friends in the face. I remember that. Imagine what he would do with his enemies. So there you have it. Those are those are this week's headlines. Did you hear that little sound that just came on? A little. You hear that? Oh yeah, they're watching us now. Who is? Thing. Oh, yeah, them. I'm in an office. They got fired. <laughs> Everything's fine. I'm in an office. In Everybody's got the same notifications on their phone. <laughs> I decide I would like to know when it's my phone. So I change it to a uh, squi- squi- squishy ball. It's called squishy ball. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> I, like many people, when I don't need my phone in my hand, I throw it in my back pocket, especially when I'm walking. And if I get messages while I'm walking, it sounds like I have the strangest farts. And it makes me laugh every time it goes off. So I don't know what you use to be different, to have a different sound for your messages, but pick something that makes you smile. I keep my phone on silent. But I do like to sit in front of... So, like, the front desk at my work, I park my car so I can see it, right? Out, right out the window. And every time people walk up and they start looking at it, I just make my car fart. And then they, like, look around, like, who farted? And I'm like, toot again. And well, then they start looking at the car. And then I'll say, hello. <laughs> it's a great time. It's Why don't you record time. that? That would be quite interesting. That would be fun to watch. <laughs> Because I'm inside the building. They can't see me. Right. But you can see them and you can record this when it happens. It would be fun to watch. You still won't be able to hear it. So when you push the fart button on your phone to make the car fart, it doesn't make a sound on your phone? No. Then you would have to impersonate the car. (laughs) You are stealing joy from us. We would want to see you. Messing with people with your farting car. So start taking video and sharing. We want to see it. Move it on. Every week we uh, find out uh, someone who has joined us on this planet around the, uh, the sun and we wish them the happiest of happy birthdays. One person gets a thing called a birthday boost where we go above and beyond to say how amazing they are. And then everyone else gets these things known as a honorable mention. As always, Chick Brew, you go first. I have chosen Lydia Payne. Um, I don't know if you, do you remember Alice Rambo and Steve Payne? I do not. They were people. They were stationed here. They were at the school, but they were super fun. And um, they were also from Austin. And over the years of my friendship with Lydia's parents, I then became friends with her. And she's always been, as I like to refer to her, as my Spanish sister. She's she's from Texas. Um, <laughs> but she is an amazing artist. <laughs> but she's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> no weird statistics there. Um, she's one of those people, no matter where you go or how long it's been, she always greets you with a hug and a how are you, and then just immediately tells you the most bizarre story you've ever heard because only Lydia could put herself in a situation and then everyone just dissolves into laughter. She is a great person to be around. She's full of charisma, energy. I just, I kind of miss her, seeing her. She's, everyone's gone now. Like, her parents left, so they she didn't come visit anymore, and now it sucks because she was super fun. Anyways, next time I'm in Austin, I will be sure to hit her up. So, Lydia, happy birthday. I miss you. Hope to see you, I don't know, in the next five years. I got some really good people on the list this week, but I'm going to go with comedian Jeffrey Ross. Jeffrey Ross, a very funny guy, one of the uh, friars there in New York City, who is probably our generation's version of Don Rickles. He he's good at the insults. He's good at making people's laugh. And and, and, he's, and he's a generally nice and fun guy. He's, he does amazing things. But the reason I picked Jeff Ross this weekend is because last episode I had talked or recently I had talked about my friend Ross, who, you know, he's a military guy. So it was his last name. 
I couldn't remember his first name. I didn't think it was Jeff, but I, 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 I've spent some brain cells trying to remember who that was. But I talked about him two episodes ago. ago. He's the guy who got lullabied to sleep by Prince and crashed his car. You remember? Yep. But while I was searching for Ross, Herbert Walker Smith the third is part of those memories. And I was wondering if I found Smitty, could I find Ross through Smitty? So I did a little detective work and I'll be doggone my friend from KC Mo, Herbert Walker Smith, the third, who I haven't spoken to in almost 40 years. I found on Facebook. I didn't just find him. I found like four different versions of him and I reached out to him and he has yet to respond but the fact that I was able to do that, there's, it's just, it's pretty doggone amazing what you can do with a little bit of effort these days. He and me, uh, we spent a lot of time together. He was, he was uh, one of my first mentors, as they call now, but leaders, as we called them back then. And uh, we almost came to blows one day. Interesting story. Me and him, uh, we were on deployment, and we were sick of each other. He wanted to punch me in the face, and I wanted to punch him in the face. So off we went. We, we, we were going to go punch each other in the face. And everywhere on that ship we went to privately punch each other in the face, somebody was already there punching somebody else in the face. There was a lot of stress back then. So, so we did a, a tour of the entire ship at every quiet location where you could normally punch somebody in the face. Somebody was already punching somebody in the face there until a vi- finally we end up on the weather decks and he looks back at me and I look at him and I'm thinking, OK, we'll just do it here. And he's like, I don't even remember why we're doing this. And I was like, oh, OK. And, and that was it. We walked it off. <laughs> but I said all of that because uh, of Jeff Ross, whose birthday it is this week. He uh, he is definitely lying about his age. I don't believe his age on there, but I want you to lie about your age. Jeff Ross, uh, continue to, to make him laugh. You're one of the best out there. Wishing you nothing but the biggest, the brightest, and the best of birthdays. <laughs> Did I lose you? No. Oh, it's your turn. Are we doing honorable mention? Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't know I needed to tell you. I thought you knew. Oh, I thought you were going to tell them the honorable mentions. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we get one birthday boost a week, and uh, apparently needing some type of prompting, Chick Brew is now about to give you her honorable mentions. Yeah, cue me up, big boy. <laughs> <laughs> so I got two Sarahs, Sarah, a.k.a. Sparkles, and then Sarah Aranella, um, Arne, Josh Terry, Wes Davis, Matt Reed, Natalie Fitzgerald, Hispana, and John Erickson, who we both know and love. You don't have to run through them so fast. I always have to rewind on you. <laughs> so the Jewish parking lot food lady, remember her? Anyway, her husband, her husband Rick is having his birthday this week. Matt Olson's having his birthday. Uh, Cicier, one of my uh, Viking friends, Ditya York, she's having. Stu Baker, Rich Miller, speaking of Kansas City, Missouri people. Stacy Conley, Harvey Boyd from the South Street Comedy Club there in uh, Jackson, Tennessee. Rachel Mota and finishing out my week are Douglas Height and uh, Chief Petty Officer, United States Navy, Andrew Burnett. Uh, great, great people, wonderful people. We, we wish whether you're my honorable mention, whether you're Chick Brew's honorable mention, we wish you all nothing but the biggest, the brightest and the best on this. Your celebration, your celebration of another trip around the sun. Is there anything? And Mr. Taney sent us something I should have talked about, but we ran out of time. We ran out of time. So Mr. Thomas, you're going to get your full hour. Uh, You know, if you could acknowledge the fact that we've been giving you a full hour, we'd appreciate that. Actually, we appreciate any of the comments you have, ladies and gentlemen. We, We are fully interactive with you. We are not too big for our bitches. Enjoy us now while we're still... (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> we're still able to respond to all of you and like all of your comments. Engage us now before we get too big, and and, and then we can't. And Harrisburg Comedy Zone just added an event that I might be interested in. Let's see. Yeah, let's be honest. You will probably always, even if you were like famous, famous, you would probably respond to everyone. 
I am zero famous and I respond to no one. So I don't feel like that would change. I feel like there's a point where, you know, at the height of my popularity, I didn't respond to everything. They are uh, the comedy zone there in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania is having their happy Halloween drag show. Oh, are you going? I don't. I, I don't go to drag shows. But uh, they're having one, and then and maybe if that floats your boat, but that's going to be Friday, October the 6th. I, I'm confused because they call themselves the Divas Down Under. Now, the men down under, the, the Thunder from Down Under, those are male strippers. And uh, the, the Divas Down Under here in central Pennsylvania, the, those are male strippers from Australia. And the Divas Down Under are just a bunch of drag queens from Pennsylvania. So I don't know why they call themselves the Divas Down Under. It doesn't make any sense. But there is fun wordplay on Happy Halloween. <laughs> so that's uh, 6 of October, 10.30 p.m. That's a Friday. You want to get your drag on. Now, that, free advertisement right there for the Harrisburg Comedy Zone, where comedy comes in all flavors. Ladies and gentlemen, I remind you this week as I remind... What? We're going. I am not. We are, we are going to that. When you say we, who are you... I will be in New York City. We are going to that. Who are you including in this We. You and me, we're going. I, I'm not going. Oh, we're going. Okay. You can think that all you want, but I'm bigger than you, and you ain't making me do anything I don't want to do. If you want to see me while I'm in America, you're going to meet me at the drag show. <laughs> 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 Ladies, and, live, live recording. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I remind you today as I remind you every day, just be the best person that you can be. And if you were a great person today, challenge yourself to be an even better person tomorrow. And don't forget that you are love. You like the way I switched that up a little bit? You like that? I like that. I, that came out good. You did good. All right. Well, with that being said, the Daryl McLean Show is going to close us out. Thank you for listening to T-Bone and Chick Brew. If you enjoyed that show, you should check out the Daryl McLean Show, independent media that won't reinforce tribalism. We have one planet and nobody's leaving, so let's reason together. You can find the Daryl McLean Show at the same place you actually listen to this show. Give it a shot. Happy, Happy Halloween. Halloween. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs>